Welcome back, YouTubers. I uh, did a video a little bit a couple days ago on uh, the unboxing of this 1916 Spanish Mauser that was converted to 7.62 NATO. Um, we're going to shoot this thing today using the ZQI uh, 7.62 NATO ammo. Good stuff. I actually have not had a problem with it shooting it through other rifles. So, yeah, this thing for the guy that commented about you'll crack the wrist on the stock if you uh, if it's too dry. I think we're already there, bud. So uh, we'll see if the crack gets any bigger. Worst case, I'll just wire wrap it or fill it in. Anyways, so if you don't know what a Spanish Mauser is, these things were designed in 1916. Um, the action's older, but this little carbine was designed in 1916. It was originally chambered in the 7x57mm Mauser cartridge. And um, I think in the 50s or 60s, they chambered a bunch of these in 7.62 NATO before they came out with like the FR7 and FR8, and subsequently the Setme. So it's got a uh, you know graduated rear sight up to 2,000 uh, meters. And um, it's just a typical Mauser leaf sight. Got kind of the front sight protector right there. Makes it kind of a neat little unique sight picture. It's pretty easy to, here, I'll try to zoom in. Sorry about the blurriness, guys. The camera doesn't always like to zoom. Anyway, so it's got that neat little um, front sight on it that you can see. We're just going to be shooting this today. I'm kind of trying to keep the video short. I don't always say that, but whatever. I will be using the Swedish Mauser clips to see how those work in here. If they don't work, we're going to have to load them one by one. Uh, for the first iteration, I'm just going to stand up and fire five rounds at 25 yards just to see if this thing's anywhere on paper. Now it's Wisconsin in the winter time, so of course we've got this white shit on the ground. And it's fairly cold, so I've got my lovely assistant over here that I'll be taking the camera and uh, I'll just do five rounds standing up right away. So we'll see if this crack gets any bigger in the stock, but who knows. Um, I also had to kind of mess with the magazine on the inside the follower was too wide for it and it wouldn't go down all the time so chamber's kind of rough like the bolt itself is a little rough i don't know if, i don't think it's a problem but i guess we'll see right here first shot out of the 1916 spanish miles are from jng sales <laughs> yeah just like i remember got a little bit of a recoil to her not terrible though <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's actually on target a little bit There's five. Keep in mind, my hands are absolutely frozen. I don't like shooting with gloves. They kind of hinder my ability to do the whatever I do when I pull the trigger. So, hands are frozen. Pretty uh, pretty cold. But it looks like I got I got all five on target. I might have pulled the one really bad. But we'll go up and check that out really quick. Standing up 25 yards. Kind of shaky. It's a little chilly. Um, overall, not bad. I was kind of holding around the center. So, at 25 yards, that's a dead deer for sure. Well, where you aim is where it hits. It doesn't seem to be shooting that high. So uh, now we'll let uh, Danny Boy shoot some, and we'll have him go at 50 yards. So he can do whatever shooting position he wants, but uh, we'll shoot at those targets now. We'll go through his pre-shooting ritual when it's cold. Yeah, all day, every day. Uh, you can shoot at the right or left 50. I don't care. There, you getting comfy enough? Need another sandbag? There's a stand right there, yeah, I was just going to say. See how lucky you guys are to have me doing most of the shooting? You don't have to take forever to set up. And, you know. That's fantastic. That Good job, Dan. Yeah. See how well that works when you use it correctly and don't throw it on the ground? It does have some concussion to it now that I'm standing on the side. Yeah. Okay, we'll go down and see how you did. I'm going to pick these up first, I think, because they look like they're getting cold. Yeah, so you look at all those hits on the... Oh. 
Okay, well, I guess we'll have to try that one more time. Yeah. So this will be take two of Dan's uh, shooting escapade. He had an incorrect sight picture, but I do it all the time, too, with different rifles that I'm not familiar with. So, not a big deal. Okay, let's see if that crack in that wrist got any bigger. You want to drop the bolt down? Oh, doesn't look like it. Looks like it's still equally as cracked. Huh, interesting, because that's a big gash, but... All right, so we're just going to record that. It's right there below that notch. Maybe it is getting bigger. Who knows? Uh, at my thumb, we'll find out. Yeah, all right, we'll go down and check out the target. This time's a lot... Never mind. We'll go back. So I'm gonna kneel down. We'll put a couple of sandbags up first. But I'm gonna kneel down and try and hit the uh, 50 yard target to see if Danny Boyce is having a bad day, or if this gun really cannot shoot past 50 yards accurately, or past 25 rather. All right. So let's see if that crack gets any bigger. All right, felt like I did everything right on that one too, so uh, let's check it out. Let's see if this crack's getting. No, it's still right there, so hopefully it just stops right there. All right. All right, so I made fun of Dan, but my target fared no better. I'm going to try aiming a little bit lower to see if it is actually shooting a lot higher than what we think, because um, 25 isn't that far, so it's kind of hard to gauge it, but we'll do that. Dan will attempt it one more time. We're going to aim a little bit lower. It's probably the uh, follower, yeah. So as you guys can see, these things aren't perfect. That's why they're probably 200 bucks. But it's still a neat little piece of weaponry, and it still works. Oh. Pull it back a little bit. Correct a malfunction on a rifle? I don't even know yet. You hit it a couple times, you just, yeah, I see it. So it is shooting a little bit uh, high. You're hitting low, about three inches down and three inches to the right. So work on your trigger squeeze, because that's your trigger squeeze. All right. But aim a little bit higher than what you were, and then you should be hitting the bullseye. Okay, you're on the right side of the paper, about an inch above the bullseye, or like, you know. Can't see that, so it might have gone in. Yeah, 
Yeah, that one was like one o'clock right outside the bullseye. So you're 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 zeroing in. All right, people. So yeah, it is shooting high, just like ninety percent of surplus rifles that I fired. Uh, considering the circumstances, it is cold. We don't have gloves. Uh, we're kind of shaky, and it's less than ideal shooting conditions as far as the temperature. Um, it, it's still pretty good. He's got two through the same hole there, two through the same hole there. Um, you know, two right here that's less than an inch apart. Got a couple more, and the bullseye. So. Yeah, now that we've established that it's shooting high, I'm going to attempt on my 50-yard target, I'm going to throw 10 rounds at her and see if I can't uh, zero in. It was shooting good windage-wise, just elevation it was off. So I, I, like you were holding right here when you got these, right? Yeah, okay. I didn't change anything. That was your trigger pull, you think? Probably. Okay. So yeah, I'll try to hold just down a little bit on my target. Here we go. Alrighty then. Just going to kneel this one out. Oh, my thumb's not working. Whew. Yeah, it gets cold, your hands stop working. Heat, they don't. It's one thing I don't like about living up here. Okie dokie. Oh, I see where it's hitting. Okay. Bullseye. Right above the bullseye. I'm just going to do 10. This is awesome. It's all right in that area. All right. So maybe this rifle isn't just a total piece of shit. Oh, that one I pulled bad. <laughs> Awesome. It's getting warm. I want to warm my hands up on this baby really quick. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. You like that, don't you? Something wrong with you. Yeah, I know, right? He's standing right next to me with a camera. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or, Jesus, three, six, There's ten. nine, ten. Awesome. So, I didn't miss a single one. They're all on there. Um, worst one was just outside or almost on the outside of the nine ring for my group shooting skills or lack thereof. This is actually pretty good given. I can't feel my hands and they're kind of not working. I was just going through the motions of, uh, you know, squeezing the trigger off. That thing is actually pretty consistent. Um, yeah, I'm liking it. You want to just shoot until we're out of ammo and, uh, call her a day. Sure. All right. Yeah. We'll see if you can get some groups like this. We'll go replace the targets quick. Awesome. I'm pretty happy with this. I just had to aim about right here for it to hit in this area. So it's about a foot, shooting about a foot high, which is why we didn't hit it here. And there's, those holes are probably from me. So yeah. All right. We'll go back and do some trigger time guys. And let me show you that this thing is actually pretty accurate. There you're right above the bullseye. Well, I'm not going to change the sight picture now. Yep. Oh, come on, man. You done goofed. Yeah. The first one just screwed it up for everything. Say that about several women I've dated. <laughs> uh, you were doing so good. I know. You know what? 
to see if this works out. Nope, that is not going to happen. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Just angle it up, push it down in the front. There. All right, you want to try that again? I'll give it a shot. Before you slide it in. There you go. All right, continue on with that beautiful group. Aim a little bit lower, though, because you're hitting right above the bullseye. Oh, she's getting a little roasty toasty. Nice and warm. <laughs> Redemption. Oh no. <laughs> I am just special today. Yeah, today. Mm -hmm. Every day. Yep, drop it down just a little bit more. You're cutting the top of the red off. Uh-uh. No. <sighs> Best part is, I'm doing it to myself. <laughs> Winning! Duh. It's the tiger blood. Nice. All right, the moment of truth. Looks like you got a shitload of hits. And what do you have to say about your group? Uh, I have a stray. <laughs> uh oh. There are 20 on there. It looks yeah. like it. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Yep, there's 20 on there. I think. Is that a double or a triple? It must be a triple because I'm counting 19. Either that or he's not the only one. <laughs> but we'll allow you one out of 20 to miss. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to shoot the bullseye out, and then we'll conclude the video. Let's see if I can shoot that red out. God, the heat's coming off the barrel. Yep. It's the only thing I don't like about these sights.
Oh, 10 rounds left, baby. I got to get more 308 or 762 for all you people that are absolutely literal on YouTube. Oh, I'm going to do the last five standing just because. Oh, that one was totally not. And the last shot of the day. I'll go walk down there if this is warm so I'm like warm my hands up. Whew. So here's the uh, last 20 of the day for me. Got a lot more in the bullseye around it. Um, pulled two on the bottom, which I totally felt both times. Other than that, we're still all in the nine ring. So yeah, we'll wrap this up really quick. We got the uh, Spanish Mauser model 1916 converted to 762 NATO in the 50s or 60s. I'd say if you're on the fence about these, like I said in my unpacking video, just get one. They're 200 bucks. Worst case, you sell it and get your money back if you don't like it. They do have a decent amount of recoil. What do you think, Dan, about the recoil? Well, I'm wearing a two-inch thick jacket, so I can't really But, I mean, know. it was there, right? You could feel it? Yeah. yeah. The concussion's pretty extraordinary. I like it. It's pretty much just every other carbine. You know, it shoots a full-powered rifle around in a short-length barrel, and um, it's going to be a little bit louder, but... Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, for all you safety gurus, that's a, that's a, it's a fired round. It's done. So it's not live. No, we didn't carry a live weapon down here. So you can't freak out about that. Yeah. It's expended. See, that's what the firing pin. So the firing pin indent looks fine on this. Um, so if, if you're concerned about safety on these, I wouldn't be, um, I've actually fired a few of these in the past and they've never blown up. I fired 308 through them which is a little bit higher pressure than the 7.62 by 5.1, and it hasn't been a big deal. If yours blows up, I don't know what to tell you. Um, maybe the rifle was just had an issue before. And there's a relief cut right there for excess pressure. But anyways, um, what do you think of the rifle overall, Dan? Out of 10, 8. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little gun. Uh, aesthetically, these kind of aren't you know the most pretty rifles, but... It'd be a great deer gun, I think. It's lightweight. It's little. Uh, it's a 308, which is really a common caliber. But and uh, for money, I'd buy one. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah, it groups like that at 50 with me, who I can't, I can't group with a damn. And uh, I'm getting all of them on target, which is a good thing. So yeah, if you're on the fence, go to J&G Sales. They bought out Samco's supply of these, and get yourself one. So, all right, we'll wrap this up. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, typical spiel. If you're uh, new to the channel and you uh, aren't liked and or haven't liked and aren't subscribed, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. I'll post a link to my Patreon in the description if you consider supporting me on there. That'd be fantastic because I can afford ammo and then get more stuff like this to make videos on. Uh, if not, that's totally cool. Not a big deal. Um, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you on the next video.